All right, so today I'm gonna to go through my best tips regarding how to make money from code. There are tons of ways to go about this and that's the really cool thing about learning how to code because you're pretty much only limited by your creativity and there's virtually no limit to the earning power you can create on your own. We all know about Facebook, Google, Amazon and even things as simple as that Flappy Bird game. These were all developed by people who knew how to code. But telling you that you can make money from creating the next Facebook is not super useful. So let's get to the ways that I believe are the easiest and most profitable. First off, freelancing. Freelancing, contracting, whatever you want to call it. My advice here is not to use the classic websites like freelancer.com, Upwork or Fiverr. Because even though you can definitely make some money on there, I've rarely seen any offers out that are that great and that means that the hourly rate for most of the projects that I've seen is fairly low. So there are two ways to do this better in my opinion. First option is to ask your family and friends and find a few people that have small businesses and then build a new website or improve their existing website for them. And if you do that for free then you get a few real world projects that you can then put on your resume that show what you can do. Then ask them if they know anyone else who owns a business who might want a website built for them. And then that way you can build up a network of clients that you can then work with on a more continuous basis, updating their sites, adding features and changing things. The second way that you could do this is by going around your local town and finding small shops, restaurants, cafes, etc. Essentially find places with shitty websites and then redesign or improve those websites for them. But don't ask them if they want you to do this. Just do it for them and then show up and show them what you've created for them. Once you've done that, you can ask them if they'd be willing to pay a certain amount for that new and improved website. And this would be a way in which you can build up your own contracting business. You essentially build a network of clients that can then hopefully refer you to other new clients. And this process is a bit tough to get started with, but once you've got it going, it can be a bit of a snowball effect. Also, this video is sponsored by Kite. Kite is an auto completion engine for Python that integrates with tons of different text editors like Atom, Visual Studio Code, Sublime, Vim, and PyCharm. Feature number one, ranked completions. And I sort of mentioned this before, but Kite's completions are sorted by relevance instead of popularity or alphabet or anything else. And they use machine learning to determine what would be the most relevant suggestion at this time. And that's how they're able to come up with better suggestions than any other system that I've used. Feature number two, line of code completions. And that means that it's able to actually complete full lines of code for you. Feature number three, intelligent snippets. Using their machine learning, they're able to actually suggest placeholder values for when you're calling different functions. And lastly, feature number four, which is called Copilot. And Copilot allows you to no longer have to Google Python documentation because Copilot allows you to see the documentation right within your text editor or IDE. So I definitely recommend that you download this and give it a try. There'll be a link in the description. The second tip that I have is a gold mine if you get really good at it. And that is to build enterprise software. And what that means is essentially you'll spend your time analyzing different companies and trying to figure out ways in which you could potentially improve something for that company by building a system for them. Essentially, you try to automate tasks for them so that you save the company time and money. An example of this would be something that I noticed when I was working at a supermarket here in Sweden. In the fruit and vegetable section, every day they get shipments of fruit that get scanned into the computer. The staff, me in this case, then takes this out into the store and places it on the shelves. Then at the end of the day, one of the staff goes around and estimates how much should be ordered of each item for the next day and then manually types this into the computer. 
but the system keeps track of sold items, ordered items, and also received items, meaning that if you can make a program that just subtracts sold items from received items, then you'll get a way better idea of how much to order for the next day. And if you add in a bit of machine learning that uses weather forecasts and previous year stats to predict how much is likely to be bought of each item in the coming day, then you'll have a software that could potentially save the store millions in terms of out of date products. And that also means that they wouldn't need a person to go around and do the evening checks. So you could potentially save the company from having to pay one employee plus significantly lower the cost of wasted fruit. The reason for bringing up that example is just to kind of showcase that by building these systems, it's quite easy to then reason or motivate a certain price for that system. Because if you can show that your system can save that company $10,000 in a year, then it's really easy to motivate that they should pay you $10,000 for that piece of software. Because yes, in the first year, they'll still lose those $10,000 but in the next year they'll be making or saving $10,000, the next year they'll save $10,000 and so on and so forth, which means that it's then pretty easy to motivate that they should pay you that amount for that piece of software. I haven't done this myself, I've thought about it and I wanna do it, but it is quite a lot of effort that goes into it. But again, if you get good at it, then you'll be really well off. Next is to develop apps, and this is something where it has crazy potential to make you a lot of money, but it comes with a giant if statement. And that is, it can make you money if you come up with a good idea, else it won't really amount to much. Like I said previously, look at Flappy Bird, even though that might be a little bit of a worn out example by now, it's a really good example because a game like Flappy Bird can be created by like a 12 year old, who's learning how to create games, and that's the first app that they create. And Naval Ravikant talks about the benefits of professions like this, where the inputs and the outputs are highly disconnected. And that's exactly what this is. Creating Flappy Bird is pretty simple, but the potential of a game like that, in terms of the potential money that can be earned from it, is pretty much infinite. And that's kind of the allure of this. The fact that something so simple can become so valuable. And in this case, creating a billion dollar app does not have to be difficult. Coming up with the idea for that app though, that's where the difficulty lies. I definitely think that it's worth to dabble in app development because it can have those outsized results. And if nothing else, making something that you yourself want is fun. Also, as an aside, you can make a decent living from having ads in your apps, given that you make a few apps and have quite a few downloads on those apps. Lastly, a few honorable mentions. Creating courses. And as soon as I hear like online course, I straight away think of the get rich quick type courses. And I can't stand that. I feel like that's sort of empty knowledge. You're teaching someone how to make money, but you're making money by teaching them how to make money. And it just doesn't feel right to me. Uh, but teaching someone how to code is different. Because you're equipping them with a skill that pretty much infinitely increases their earning power. If they learn to code, they'll be able to make a great living. It's quantitative knowledge as compared to the get rich quick courses, which teach qualitative knowledge. And then there's also coding competitions, which I guess you can use to make some extra money. There's pretty much coding competitions going on all, all year round. So I guess that can be a good way to make some extra money. Uh, I haven't tried it myself, so I don't know too much about it. So that's why I kind of didn't want to bring it up as one of my main ways to make money with code. And then there's also WordPress plugins, so you can make some plugins for WordPress websites and then you can have a price on those and you can sell them on the WordPress store sort of thing. Again, I haven't done this myself, but I know some people that do this and make a little bit of money from this. And it's kind of one of those pretty popular ways of making some extra money from code. But again, I haven't tried it, so I don't quite know. But yeah, those are my tips for how to make money from code. And I hope you got some new ideas for things to try. And that's it for this one. I hope I'll see you in the next one.